Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com in the topic kinematics titled Match That Graph. All right, so there are uh, seven things we need to know. They're clumped up into groups of two. Uh, is it fast or slow, moving right or left, constant velocity or changing velocity? So really there are four. One, two, three, four. But we're going to look at all seven of these one at a time. If you're not familiar with uh, position time graphs and velocity time graphs, I'm going to put a link here to a video that explains them in more detail. Um, I'm going to be focusing on the differences between the two and how to, how to match them. So uh, let's start off with stationary. So in this concept builder, you're going to be given a position time graph and you're going to have to find a velocity time graph that could describe the same motion. Um, or you'll be given a velocity time graph and match it with a position time graph. One of the keys is recognizing that what's going on at the beginning of the position time graph has to be the same as what's going on at the beginning of the velocity time graph. And what's going on at the end of the time of the position has to be the same as what's going on at the end of the time of the velocity. So if it is stationary, either the whole time or at the beginning or at the end, you will see that stationary means the position is not changing. That's what stationary means. So anywhere on this graph, you could have a horizontal line and it would represent being stationary. However, on a velocity time graph, if you're stationary, your speedometer is reading zero. So the only place you can be to be stationary is at time zero. So if the beginning of the graph is pretty much horizontal, then you'd expect it to start out at zero. If the end of the graph is horizontal, you'd expect it to end at zero. And that's the idea of uh, whether it's moving or not. Next, let's talk about how fast it's moving. Okay, so if something is moving slowly, that means its position is not changing very much each second. So that means it's going to have a small slope, okay, like that, or like the beginning of a curve that might curve down. This beginning part is slow, okay, or perhaps a curve like this, the ending part is slow. Okay, so on the velocity time graph, well, what is slow? It would mean your speedometer is reading a small number, a little bit above zero or a little bit below zero. Okay, so in the case of uh, this blue line here, okay, the beginning of it is slow. So we would expect the beginning of it to be near zero. Okay, by the end, we'll see what happens when it goes fast in a moment. Okay, so close to zero is what's going on here. If we look at the green line, the green line at the end of its journey is close to zero, so it would be close to zero here. The two I drew had negative slope. Let's draw one with a positive slope. We'll get to that in a second. But at the end of this, it's close. It's got a small slope, and so at the end, it'll be close to zero, somewhere in that range. All right, uh, moving on to moving fast. So moving fast, oh, I better clear that. So moving fast, now we have a steep slope. Fast means that it covers a lot of position in a very short time, a lot of position in a very short time. So that would be fast, that would be fast as well, because once again, in a very short time, it's changing its position by an awful lot. Okay, but on a velocity time graph, if we're going fast, our car's speedometer is going to read a big number. We'll talk in a moment about the positive being in the positive direction, this the negative direction. But if you're going fast, you're going at a big number in one of those two directions. So that means you're going to be far from zero. Okay, let's take a look at a couple curves here real quick before we move on. So if we have a slope like this, this part is moving fast. That's the beginning, so we would expect it to be far from zero because it's steep. Here at the end, it's fairly flat. That means it's close to zero, so this line would be going something like this. So once again, this curve would be something like this because it starts out steep, which means far from zero. Speedometer is far from zero. It ends up flat, 
So it's getting close to zero over here. And if we flipped it around and did something like this, it's going in the negative direction now, so we'll be negative. We'll talk about that in a moment, but this is uh, pretty flat, so we start close to zero. This is steep, so we end up far from zero. We'd get a line like that. All right, let's take a look at uh, the direction. Oops. There we go. So if, if the object is moving towards the right, that's in the positive direction, it's going to have a positive slope. Slope. So something like this, like this, like this, like this. Anything that's sloping up will be a positive direction. Same thing over here. That just means your velocity is in the positive direction. So your graph is anywhere up in here. It could look like that. It could look like that. It could look like that. It could even have a curve. Well, I don't think there are any with a curve on a velocity time graph for this particular concept builder. Okay, let's take a look at a couple exactly. So if we went like this, this is in the positive direction. So it starts with a big slope, which means a big velocity. So it's going to start out up here. It ends with a small slope, so it's going to end up down here. Still going in the positive direction, though. And so we get a line like that. Uh, similarly, if we had a line like this, this would start out with a small slope, but it's going... Uh, oh, no, let's do that on the next slide. So that's uh, moving right, moving left. So moving left now, anything sloping downwards, because it's going from a rightward position to a leftward position, or it's going more negative, you could say. So a negative slope means moving to the left, any of those three lines. The negative part of the graph is down here. That means your speed is negative. If you have a negative slope, you have a negative speed. By the way, the slope is the, the velocity. The slope on a position time graph is velocity. All right, so uh, let's take a look at an exact example. So we'll take this one. Uh, if our slope is small, that means we're close to zero, not going, not going very fast. Our slope is steep, we're far from zero. I chose both of them to be in the negative part of the graph because in general, this is sloping down. It's never going up. Okay, well, let's make it a little bit more like that. There you go, never going up. It's always sloping down. So that means a negative velocity. So we're down here on the negative side. We connect our two points and voila, that's what that graph would look like. Finally, oops, uh, constant velocity versus changing velocity. So constant velocity will have a slope. It'll be either like this or like this, depending on whether it's going positive in the positive direction or in the negative direction, but it'll be a straight line. Um, and if you have see a sloped po uh, position versus time graph, that means your velocity time graph will be horizontal because this is covering the same amount of distance, same amount of position each time. The position is changing by the same amount each second. So that means the velocity or speedometer is going to read the same thing. Okay, change colors here real quick. The blue line sloped negative is going to have a negative uh, speed, but because it's it's a, a straight line over here, a straight sloped line, it's going to be a horizontal line on velocity time. The speed is not changing. Finally, if something is accelerating, that means we're going to have a curve over here, either one of those curves or, or one of these curves. Okay, and that's going to give us a sloped line over here. Okay, so let's look at exactly which one's which. So we'll start with red. We have a slope like this. That means it's starting out steep. And this is in the negative direction. So steep means going fast. So it's going to be up here. It ends up uh, fairly uh, flat. So that means close to zero. It's not changing its position much. So that would look like this. We use orange for our next one. Once again, in the negative direction, because it's curving, it's uh, sloped down. Starts off fairly flat, close to zero. By the end, it's going pretty steep. That means it's going fast. And so we get a graph like that, going fast at the end. All right, we'll switch to green. So then another possible slope you'll see is something like that. And so if it is starting off, it's going in the positive direction. So we're going to be up here in the positive now. 
Okay, and if it's starting off fast, that means far from zero up here, a high speedometer reading, and it ends up getting pretty flat, so it's going back towards a slow speed. It's slowing down. And then finally, we have this curve. It starts off fairly flat in the positive direction, so it's on the positive side, but fairly flat. Ends up going pretty fast, and so it ends up going pretty fast to high speed on the speedometer. And that is everything you need to know. I'm going to flash up real quick the um, chart of all of them. So just remember that you can use this if you need to know if it's going fast. If you see something that's steep, that should be far from zero. Steep on a PT graph should be far from zero on a VT graph. Something that's sloping upwards should be in the positive part of VT graph. Something in a PT graph that's sloping downwards should be at the in the bottom half of a VT graph. And you get the idea. So uh, as you go through and puzzle these out, you should be learning what a PT graph is teaching you, which is where something is at any given point in time, and what a VT graph is showing you, which is how fast is it going at any point in time. And these are all your connectors between the two. All right, have fun puzzling that out on physicsclassroom.com. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments below. Thank you. We'll see you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beard Man.